Hello there. Welcome to the SPS pod. In this episode, we're going to talk about how Jim Rowan punched me in the gut. Metaphorically, but he still punched me in the gut. <laughs> Let's jump in to this episode as I revisit a old Jim Rowan seminar that I watched over 10 years ago. Let's get into it. Welcome to the SPS podcast, the self-performance strategies podcast. Unlocking the secrets to success and unlocking the secrets to self-performance so you can improve mentally, emotionally, and physically. The SPS podcast is brought to you by the Pro Accelerator Program, helping business owners and business leaders save at least 10 working hours a week, improve their focus, and make more money. If that sounds like something you're interested in, check out the show notes and follow the links. But let's now jump in to this episode. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are in episode 47 of the SPS podcast of the Self Performance Strategies podcast. And in this episode, as I said in the intro, we're going to talk about Jim Rowan punching me in the gut. And also in this episode, we're going to do things a little differently. We're going to have a number of quotes probably about seven or eight of them (laughs) sprinkled throughout this episode as I revisit a seminar recorded by Jim Rowan in the 70s or 80s that I watched about 10 years ago and it really impacted me. It really did. But anyway, before we jump in, let's frame this episode with a quote. And of course, it comes from the man himself, Jim Rowan. Jim Rowan said, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. I fully believe in that statement. I really believe that it is the small wins and the small things that we do each day that create big success. As another old quote goes, small hinges swing big doors. And I believe that small successes swing the door of big successes. So if you can do the small things right, the big things will come into your life. And that's why I love that quote by Jim Rowan. Success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. Now, if we go back to when I started my personal development journey, I really did fall into watching, reading, and listening to the big gurus. You know, the Tony Robbins, the Darren Hardy, the Robin Sharmas, the Brendan Bouchards, they all had a very solid message. Robin Sharma's books and Brendan Bouchard's books really helped me get going. I, I bought it, their online courses. I even paid, I even, yeah, that's right. I f- totally forgot about this. I even paid once for a VIP ticket to a live event in Vancouver back in like early 2016, put on by Brendan Bouchard. And there was a whole bunch of other big uh, success gurus there and some smaller ones I'd never heard of before. But, but when I was getting into personal development the first three or four years, I'm reading the, the emails from these big gurus, reading their, their their content, watching the YouTube videos. They all mentioned a guy, or they would all randomly quote this person. And it was Jim Rowan. They would talk about his ideas. Um, as far as I'm aware, both Darren Hardy and Tony Robbins have stories about going to his seminars. I think Tony Robbins even talks about you know Jim Rowan being the main inspiration for who he is today. And I I saw that as a name and a thread that I wanted to pull on. And as we all know, if you're listening to this, you probably know that Jim Rowan uh, is, you know, a motivational speaker, author, was at the peak of his powers, probably late 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, really influenced a, a lot of the big gurus who are around today. And that's, that's the, the thing about this guy. He left the legacy. I think he passed in 2009. And... I watched this seminar that I'm that on YouTube in about uh, probably about 2012 or 13. So what happened was because I heard his name, obviously I googled him and obviously I ended up on YouTube, saw a bunch of his clips, and then very quickly after watched a bunch of his clips, a two-hour long seminar that was kind of like a dodgy recording. It looked like it had been cut and edited, and it was not the the, the best quality picture, uh, and the sound wasn't great. It was pushed in front of me by the algorithm and I decided to watch it and I watched it I think on two speeds so it took me like an hour to watch it but 
But, but here's the big, big, big buts. As soon as I clicked on it, I was immediately sucked in. This guy, this dude, Jim Rowan, his presence and his humor were electric. I opened my journal, I started taking notes, and, and that hour or, or a bit, hour and a bit went by in a flash. But Jim Rowan kept punching me in the gut. He really did. I don't know how else to explain it, but his 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 one-liners, his zingers, his his ideas, they they made me feel hope, they made me feel regret, but they also made me laugh out loud at times as well. His his presence, he had this blunt, empathetic aura about him. He said things that were really blunt and funny, and he kind of smiled and laughed, but then you were kind of like, "Oh, crap, I did that. I I'm 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 that guy who who's making those mistakes. I, I'm not confused person who doesn't have goals. I, I'm not sure how, I, how, how he did it, but you know, go, go, go check him out. If you've never watched any of his stuff before, he's brilliant. He said things that sound obvious and you can even call them platitudes. You could call them platitudes at this stage. If you've read a bunch of personal development books, but the way he presented the information hit me deep in my core. I was moved to take action because of his words. Now, as I said, it's been roughly 10 years since I watched that seminar and to this day, many of his one-liners still impact me. And I want to revisit in this podcast, in this SPS podcast, in this 47th episode, I want to revisit six of the quotes from that seminar. And the reason why I'm revisiting it is because I actually find my journal entries from 2013, where I started talking about Jim Rowan. And I was like reminded about the seminar and I clicked on it and I watched it quickly again on YouTube. D- different version, different link, I'm assuming. And I was like, wow, So I thought I'd pull out six lessons from that seminar and revisit them, but revisit them from the position of where I am today. As a solopreneur, as a business owner, as a coach of other entrepreneurs, of business leaders, I wanted to revisit these ideas from my mindset today in 2023. Not the mindset I had in 2012, 2013, 2014, when I was getting into personal development and first coming across Jim Rowan. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. We're going to go through six quotes quickly and I'm going to talk about these quotes and I'm going to talk about my feelings about those quotes today. Sound like a good time? It does sound like a good time. Let's have a good time together. Let's do this. Okay, quote number one from a a seminar by Jim Rowan from the 1970s. One of the first things he said that I fully agree in and I still think about it today, either you run the day or the day runs you. Super famous quote by Jim Rowan. This is one of the most important concepts you need to understand as a business owner or solopreneur. You need to plan your days in a way that works for you. Schedule in your big rocks and your high value work and your high dollar work. Make sure they are up and front first thing in your day. Make time for your health. Make time for your relationships. Make time for your big things in your business. If you don't do that each day, the day will run you into the ground. And your high value work and your work in your business won't get done. That is how I'm reading that quote today. Either you run the day or the day runs you. 100% fully agree, gold medal quote, exactly true. (laughs) Quote number two, quote number two, here we go. If you don't like how things are, change it. You're not a tree. (laughs) Come on, man. That one made me laugh when I first said it. It still makes me giggle. still makes me laugh. Because most people do act like trees. Like, look around you. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, they, they stand in place. They stay at the same jobs. They stay. They, they they are born and die in the same cities. They don't do anything massive in their lives. They 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 maintain. Nothing wrong with that if that's your life and you're you're 100 loving it. But a lot of people keep repeating the same actions and getting frustrated. I know I used to do that. You know, you let the seasons come and go without moving. You you don't do anything to change your rut or your routine. And as a business owner, I, I understand that time moves fast. The last two years of me running a, a business of coaching people, I, I feel like I've had five or 10 years worth of, of, of experience that I had the previous five or 10 years, if you know what I mean. I've had the same again, but in two years. So I, I'm constantly having to update my offers, uh, uh, improve my skills. Uh, competition comes into the market. Algorithms change. The, the economy goes through weird ups and downs you know this is the world that you live in as a as a business owner teams need to be upskilled you need to be upskilled you need to hire people you need to fire people it's it's craziness but as a business owner you're really sucked into that time happens so fast and if you don't change with it 
you'll just get left behind. You'll become an old tree sitting on a, sitting on your own somewhere, not getting the sun anymore. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that tree analogy, but that quote, if you don't like how things are, change it. You're not a tree. So true by Jim Rowan. Change things. You're not you're not rooted into the ground. You're not rooted into certain decisions and processes. You can you can get up and walk away because you're not a tree. You can get up and leave. I think that's the old joke. <laughs> get up and leave. <laughs> a terrible joke. I can't believe. I can't believe I just meant that. I just said that. Yeah, you can't wait around. Expect things to change. Be ready to move. You have to act if you want to win in life and as a business owner. That's just the simple fact of things. Okay, quote number three. We're moving through these quickly. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenges. Wish for more wisdom. Love this one. Love this one. Because I am living this quote right now. Growing a business. Learning how to tell stories. Learning how to run a podcast. Writing with more punch. Speaking with more punch. Improving my fitness. Improving my mental strength. Improving my abilities in, in many areas of my life, mentally, emotionally, and physically, internally, and externally. And as I do this, life puts these challenges in front of me. And they'll put challenges in front of you. But as a business owner, those challenges are like standing in front of a burst fire hydrant. And that's how I felt over the last two years. Kind of touched that in the last quote. You're just getting hit in the face so hard all the time with information, with ideas, with opportunities, with, with problems, challenges, etc., etc. Constantly 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 the information is just hitting you negative positive but the thing is i wouldn't have it any other way and if you're a business owner business leader or you're trying to grow a side hustle or you're listening to this with ideas you probably don't want it any other way because all of that all of that means you're growing all of that will make you stronger i know it's making me stronger because i believe playing life on hard mode makes it easier in the end i'll repeat that I believe playing life in hard mode makes it easier in the end. So as Jim Rowan says in this third quote, don't wish things were easier. Don't wish for less problems. Don't wish for less challenges. Wish to be better. Wish to have more wisdom. Wish to be elite. And that's what we're going to do by facing these challenges. Okay? You agree? You with me with that? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, quote four, quote four. Formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. I'm trying to work that one out right now because I've got the formal education. I've got the corporate job. I'm now an entrepreneur for two years. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. But in the past 18 months, I've made well over six figures with my business. It's brilliant, grateful, amazing. I, I can't believe it. It's magical for me. Uh, and I hope you're having the same kind of success in your life with your business if you're listening to this. And I've had, a, I, I, out of that time, and I've had, I spent a decent money on support. I have uh, on self-education. I've hired experts. I'm in communities, I'm in masterminds, and they've all been a massive help. So even though I have a formal education, I have a business degree from like 32 thousands from university in England, and I've got you know 10, 15 years of, of corporate experience, and I, and I read books constantly, but the biggest leaps forward in my life and in my career, career have come from self-education, from have come from doing project management certificates, have come from hiring experts, have come from putting myself in masterminds, have come from stretching myself to pay for self-education, from hiring the coaches that have got me to where I am today. Self-education has changed my thinking and made me more money. Facts. To win in life and business, you need to be a lifelong learner and you need to invest in yourself. That is just simple facts. There we go. I'm dropping the facts here <laughs> in the 47th episode of the SPS podcast. Quote five, quote five, another favorite one. I do love this one. This is another one that made me laugh. <laughs> Motivation alone is not enough. If you have an idiot and you motivate him, you now have a motivated idiot. <laughs> Jim Rohn, man, just brilliant. He's, he, just the way he's saying things is brilliant. <laughs> I love this one because for me, when I, when I think about my current life and my current situation and where I hang out on LinkedIn and Twitter and other places, YouTube, it, for me, it highlights the shallow content and the performance in the productivity space. It's just so much bullshit out there. 10x or 5x to 2x your morning routine. You know, 18 things to do to do before 6 a.m. You know, these six habits will help you disappear for six months and return dangerous. I mean, <laughs> these garbage hooks on the sh shallow, re repetitive, platitude, personal development stuff that it's just a, a chat GPT could write, but you put like a, a, a hook on, on top of it and it's meant to mean something different. It's just, it's all absolute motivational garbage. 
Content like that is cheap dopamine. It doesn't teach you anything. All it does is motivate you. It doesn't actually take you past the motivation stage. And you just end up not really understanding the concepts. Not really understanding what, what what's being said. But you're motivated to go and run off in a direction. I mean, that, that you should avoid that type of, of content. You know, As a business owner, it's essential to make sure your inputs are at a high level. Motivation alone doesn't work. So that's why I avoid a lot of motivational porn. That's why I, I, I avoid a lot of that garbage, uh, you know, chat GPT style uh, motivational productivity stuff that you see on Twitter, very heavily on Twitter and LinkedIn. <laughs> you know, you, you need content that, that, that helps you build foundations and systems. You need content that gives you the right ideas. You need content that, that is deeper than, than shallow stories and platitudes and basic information. And that's why you love listening to this podcast. <laughs> I hope I'm delivering to you deeper information than some motivational BS that you hear out there. That, that's my goal. That's my goal is to tell stories that I'm going to get you connected into the, the right systems and the right foundations that you have to build to help you be successful in life, you know, and help you do less dumb shit and help you fulfill your potential. That's that's my goal of this podcast. You're listening to this right now. That's exactly what I'm trying to do by telling you these types of stories from my past and how these types of quotes that you could call platitudes motivated me and punched me in the gut and made me take action. And that's why we're going to finish off with a fantastic quote from Jim Rowan. The sixth one I want to talk about is you cannot change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction overnight. This is extremely key to understand at any stage of your personal development journey, at any stage of your business journey. All success comes from committing to a bigger, better future. And you can decide on that bigger, better future right now. When I decided to start a podcast, I made that commitment and I started one coming up in eight or nine months ago. We're on the 47th episode. When I started to post on Twitter, I committed to that from early 2020 onwards, and I have nearly 70,000 followers currently on there. When I decided to start committing to a newsletter, I think it's it's been a, over a year straight of me uh, sending out a weekly newsletter to my email list. These are all things I committed to. Now, they didn't automatically change my destination. I didn't send the first newsletter, and all of a sudden... You know, Forbes gave me a phone call and we're like, oh, hey, Steve, your newsletter's uh, amazing. You've been doing it uh, for so long now. It's so great. Hey, do you want to be on our front cover? No, that never happened because my destination hasn't, I haven't come to my destination yet. But maybe in four or five or six, seven years, I've been constantly doing my newsletter, of getting to two or 300 episodes in a podcast, of continuing to post on Twitter and get hundreds of thousands of followers. Who knows what the future holds for my destination because of these actions that I take? Because once you've committed 100%, you instantly change your life direction. When you commit to something and you start doing it, you change your life direction. Your actions are transformed because you choose a different future. Who I am today is exponentially, there's even a word exponentially, exponentially (laughs) different because I started posting on Twitter, because I started a podcast, because I started a newsletter. If I didn't do those three things over the last three years, I, you first of all, you wouldn't be listening to me right now, but I'd be, in a, I'd be in a completely different situation, doing completely different things. So when I chose to do those things, those things automatically changed the direction of my life. Now, I can tell you I started a business because of Twitter. I can tell you that my newsletter has brought me clients, and I can tell you that this podcast has brought me clients. So all these things that I started from scratch, have all contributed to me signing clients and helping them win, which is fantastic, which is amazing. But it all started with committing to a different direction, committing to something and sticking with it. Because when you run a business, you're put in front of endless opportunities. You are, you are. There's lots of opportunities. And you end up doing the wrong things because some some opportunities can take you to places you don't want to go. That's the, the other flip side. Of when you don't actually fully commit to things, you can end up doing lots of things that you don't really want to do. But you can shape your next steps and you can reduce a lot of overwhelm and frustration by getting specific in your direction. Getting specific where you want to go. Creating an ultimate scenario. Deciding what you want to do with your goals. Deciding what you want to do mentally, emotionally, and physically. Deciding what you want to do in your relationships, your health, with your wealth. When you pick those goals and you commit to them, The universe has a way of conspiring 
to help you. Trust me, it does work. It, it does happen like that. The, the more you take action in the right direction, the easier it becomes, but it's hard to take action. Now, that, like that old saying, you know, life is simple, but no one said it was easy. It's, it's simple to set your direction. It's hard to keep going at it. So that quote, the final quote, the sixth quote that came out of that seminar that I watched 10 years ago by Jim Rowan on YouTube one night. You cannot change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction overnight. So true. And if you're currently running a business, if you're currently stuck in your life, if you're currently feeling a bit overwhelmed, this one simple idea could have a breakthrough for you just by committing to a couple of small habits on a daily basis or a couple of habits or processes or systems that you're going to do weekly. In a year's time, in six months' time, even three months' time, even, even even a month's time, you could be in a completely different place. But it's all about just committing. Because you can change your direction overnight, overnight by committing to something new. Well, that was it. That was the 47th episode of the SPS Podcast. I deeply appreciate you listening to me. In the show notes below, I will put a link to the Jim Rowan seminar that i watched on youtube i will also put a link to my socials and that's at Stephen timoney on twitter it's at s-t-e-v-t-i-m-o-n-e-y send me a dm let me know what you think of the podcast also i'll have my website there which is stephentimoney.com s-t-e-p-h-e-n-t-i-m-o-n-e-y and i will have the link to my pro accelerator program where i help solopreneurs and business owners business leaders save time make more money and do less dumb shit i hope you check it all out thanks very much for listening again we'll see you in the next one make it a good one